For those of you who have already read the bulletin, you know that this weekend, Bishop Boyer is going to be preaching to all of the parishes in the diocese. And so I'd like to invite Bishop to come forward. Come on, Bishop, don't be shy. He's actually not here. He, we're gonna be listening to an audio little homily from him and then I'll say a few words afterwards. Hit it, Nancy. <laughs> Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me. The first reading from the prophet Isaiah reveals the whole gamut of reaction at an encounter and call from the Lord. First, amazement at the majesty and goodness of God. Then, often, an acute awareness of our guilt, what we lack, how we have failed, how we are unsupported for the task at hand. For I am a man of unclean lips, living among, among a people of unclean lips. But then, God provides, as he always does, and invites us to mission. And our hearts desire to accept that mission. Here I am, I said, send me. In today's gospel, we hear the call of Simon Peter, our first pope, the rock on whom Jesus built this church, which has stood the test of 2,000 years of challenges. Simon and his fellow fishermen were washing their nets, a sign of their work being completed for the day. Jesus invites Simon to put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Our rock, our first pope, responds with, responds with some discouragement, but also an acceptance of the mission. Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. And of course, what follows is a great catch. Simon's humility before the Lord and Jesus' invitation to them to become fishers of men. Their hearts desired to accept the mission and the rest is history, salvation history. I am here with you today preaching to every parish in our diocese to convey an invitation to mission. As you may have heard, Pope Francis has called for a worldwide synod, asking us to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. The word synod means together on the way. We are a pilgrim people. Yet as sin enters in, our journey becomes divided. Factions and cliques enter in. Open dialogue becomes difficult, especially regarding religion. We find it difficult to truly listen to those who do not share our deeply felt beliefs, opinions, or experiences. Even active Catholics can strongly disagree about the way forward. Through this synodal experience, Pope Francis invites all of us to put out into the deep and attempt anew to listen to those who are different than us. In our diocese, we are rooting our synodal mission in dialogue with those who are no longer practicing the faith. We want to equip each person in the pews to enter into open conversation with someone in your life who does not regularly participate in our Catholic community life. This is an invitation to listen. We want to be sensitive to wounds, anger, or negative perspectives. We want to listen as Jesus would, open to what the Holy Spirit is revealing in this encounter. This is not an invitation to debate. We don't seek to judge or correct a person in these moments of open conversation. Every person listening to this homily today is a member of the body of Christ as church. You are the church, and as a church, we want to listen through your ears to those who have left us, who have never given the Christian life a chance. What are they saying? What do they need? Now, you may say, but Bishop, I've tried to talk to my son or daughter, my neighbor, about why they don't come to church anymore. I've tried to invite my coworker to a Bible study. I've tried, but they're not interested. I know the wound of seeing loved ones leave the faith, my heart aches for my own family members and friends who are not living in the joy of the gospel. I'm 70 years old. I know what it is to try to strike up these conversations, these invitations, and then seemingly fail to draw that loved one any closer to Christ. Indeed, sometimes it feels like the gap is wider than it was before. I know that each of you in the pews has been like Simon Peter. We too have worked hard all night and caught nothing. Today we are called to put out into deep water to try again with the grace of the Holy Spirit at work in this global church synod. Together we will take these synodal conversation guides and open a new conversation with someone who has left the active practice of the faith or never given it a chance. The guide includes a personal prayer to invite the grace of the Holy Spirit upon your conversation. 
It includes a brief explanation of the synod so you can share with the person why you are inviting them to conversation. There are also some suggestions to help us be more successful and not end up mired in negativity. Finally, there are questions that I ask you to focus on during these synodal conversations, and I ask you to listen with gentleness and openness, with the heart of Jesus. You could listen to one person or ten, however many the Holy Spirit calls you to speak to. Think of the impact these gentle conversations could have. And then we have a website up, set up to receive feedback from your conversations. Pope Francis and my fellow bishops want to hear what people have to say about the Catholic Church, good, bad, or otherwise. We can take it. We want to know how we can better support every human person in our midst. So please, after your conversations, use the website on the card to reflect this feedback to our diocese. Thank you for your attention today and for participating in this great diocesan-wide and truly global mission. And may God bless you all. I think the bishop preaches too short. The bishop is issuing us a challenge to really ask people why they're not practicing their faith. What's happening here is that the, diet, or sorry, the world has this synod on synodality, which is journeying with and listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. And in our diocese, we're concretizing that on the lost sheep. So he's challenging us to have these kinds of conversations. And at the entrances and the exits, you'll see these little cards. We've already kind of run out of them. We have copies of these cards, which explain everything that he said, but they have suggested questions for the conversation, right? The, the important part is to listen to people. See, all of us have a need to be heard. And, it's, and a significant part of loving people is hearing them not just so that we can be more effective in reaching them, but understanding where they're at. Because people who have left the church need to know that they're heard and they're seen. So this card has some very good questions that are non-threatening, non-judgmental to start conversations. For example, the first question is, what do you think about masks and vaccines? That's not one of the questions, that's a joke. <laughs> that would be a terrible question to ask people. The first question is like, like, is describe your relationship with God. And then it talks about what kinds of positive experiences have you had with the Catholic Church? Have you had any negative experiences? Share that with me. And the idea here is that as we listen to people, we can not only submit this data in these conversations to the bishop by April, but we can come to grow in our relationship with the people that have fallen away. I strongly encourage you to pick up one of these, uh, these cards or the little uh, the sheets that we have to really engage in these conversations uh, so that we can truly be concerned about the lost sheep and help bring them back. God bless you.